Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm back again with another video. So, this is the long awaited 40 gallon uh, aquarium. It's going to be a uh, reef tank. Um, basically, um, I know you guys have been waiting for me to come out with this video. Um, so, let's get right into it. This video is going to be over the livestock and over what I've got inside the aquarium and um, in a future video probably the next video I'm gonna be going over all the hardware which is all the accessories that I got uh, that keeps this tank running so um, let's get right into it with a close-up first off um, I guess I should talk about what I've had in this tank so far um, that that isn't in here right now so I had a uh, the Lubbock's Ferry Rass that I had in my previous 20 gallon tank that guy I had put him in here and he just kept on bullying the hippo tank over there and they just weren't getting along he kept on bullying him and I figured that uh, he was going to end up killing the hippo tank if I didn't do anything about it. So I went ahead and I took him out to save the life of this blue tank because he was tearing up his fins. And um, next, what I had in this tank was a uh, yellow headed or golden headed sleeper goby. Um, he was doing a great job at cleaning up the sand, but. I just didn't like that he would pick up sand off the sand off the sand bed and then swim up into the water column and then disperse it all over the rocks. So um, I got rid of him and um, I replaced him with my uh, diamond goby. Um, I've been having a little bit of bad luck with diamond gobies lately. Um, the first one I had jumped out. Uh, I had him for about a week. I got him on a Monday or a Tuesday. And I didn't have a lid. Now I do have a lid. I basically made a uh, custom uh, window screen and put it as my lid. But when I got the first Diamond Gobi, I didn't have the top on there. I was planning on making it that weekend. And I figured that he would, he would make it until I, I put the top on. But sadly when I came home that weekend with the with the top already made he was on the floor dried up so yeah definitely these guys if y'all plan on getting diamond gobies I would suggest that y'all have a uh, top on your on your tank because they're real uh, real notorious for for jumping out and uh, so yeah that was the first diamond goby the second diamond goby I had uh, I think he starved, might have starved to death. I'm not sure because he wasn't coming out. He wasn't eating. He was always hiding underneath the rocks. He was so shy. Every time he would come out and if he would see a fish move around, he would just go back into his hole. So, yeah, uh, he ended up dying. And uh, that was Diamond Gobi number two. Um, Diamond Gobi number three basically in uh, the previous video of, uh, uh, to this channel um, I had uh, I was showing you guys a video acclimating a pair of gobies and uh, put those gobies in and at nighttime and then the, the next day uh, the smaller goby was caught in my mp10 on the side and he was dead so um, my guess was that in the middle of the night something scared him and he just darted around the whole tank and then when he got by the MP10 he just couldn't escape it and he got stuck there. So yep those were the first three uh, casualty gobies that I've had. Um, and one of those gobies from that pair that I did have did make it. There's, he's still in this fish tank. And uh, I felt bad for him. I mean, I really liked to have. Uh, I really liked the way they they interact with each other. They're always hanging out with each other, cleaning uh, sand together. So 
I went ahead and I took the uh, one that died to the local fish store and uh, they refunded my money and uh, with that I bought this guy another little buddy so now I have two diamond gobies this is going on to the fifth diamond goby that I've purchased in the past couple months but they both look very healthy they look like they're active and uh, I can get a shot of them over here you can see in the reflection they're both right here and they all they do is just hang out all day long and just sift sand together so it's it's pretty cool I was I was afraid that they weren't gonna get along when I added the new one but I've had no problems they're both getting along very good so yeah I'm very happy with these two guys now moving on I've got a uh, another goby where is he he's back there he's a neon goby way back there on the back glass and what he does is uh, he, he goes around and he cleans the uh, fish he, he'll latch onto the fish and he'll uh, start cleaning parasites off of them so that's real good uh, helps to keep the fish healthy helps to keep them clean and uh, yeah he's real small I was concerned with him in here with all these power heads but I've had him in here for about two months now and haven't had no issues at all I see him every now and then he latches onto the yellow uh, tang and he cleans them so it's very uh, it's very cool when you when you see the symb symbiotic relationships inside of a reef aquarium um, I would like to have clownfish and anemones in here but uh, to, for their symbiotic relationship relationship but um, I plan on going SPS on this tank so uh, an anemone just wouldn't uh, fit with my plans for this tank but I, I do plan on getting clownfish in the future still but let's move on um, we got the blue hippo tank that was in the 20 gallon he has grown a little bit I say maybe he's about doubled in size um, he's very active very happy now that I got the wrasse out of his uh, the wrasse out of his hair then uh, he's been very happy he doesn't have nobody picking on him no more these two tanks get along very good all they do all, all day is just swim around and clean the rocks so it's pretty good um, so yeah as far as fish go that's all I got in here I did bring over the uh, hermit crab he's up here I've got the hermit crab I've got the two turbos one, one of these turbos right here and I've got my shrimp the same uh, cleaner shrimp that I had before he just likes to hang out back there and yeah that's about it as far as uh, as far as uh, livestock goes uh, my plans in the future are to add a pair of uh, clownfish uh, preferably some Picasso clownfish if not some slow snowflake clownfish and um, also either one or three antheas but I'm still doing research on them I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure but I'm, I'm looking into a couple of antheas for this tank I think they would look very uh, pretty for this tank and bring a lot of character a lot of life to this tank um, <clears throat> yeah so that's about it that's all I got in this tank so far and, and other than the clownfish and the antheas that's all of the livestock that's going to be in here um, the rest is going to be corals I'll start adding SPS and uh, I'll make a video when I do start doing that um, as far as sand goes I've got two bags of sand so I think the each bag is 20 pounds so about 40 pounds of live sand 
And I've also got 42 pounds of live rock. And if you guys have been noticing these uh, corals, these are the corals from the uh, 20 gallon that I took down. Um, initially, they were doing bad because in the 20 gallon they they were they were doing real bad. Uh, I kind of let that tank go to shit, and the corals weren't too happy. But I am noticing that they're doing a lot better, especially with these new LEDs. Um, I noticed a difference a lot on this A can. This is the A can that was bleaching out. He's starting to get his colors back. He's starting to get a real deep orange color. And this guy looks cool. He looks happy as usual. I never had any problems really with this A can. And this A can is doing fine also. He's not as plump. He's not as extended as he was in the 20 gallon. But like I said, at the end of the 20 gallon, I kind of let everything go to shit. So they weren't too happy um, these are the Zoas I've been having trouble trying to get them happy uh, I'm having trouble with the lighting I'm not exactly sure where I should put the lighting at but they're opening up now before when I first had them in here they weren't opening up at all This is the Tubbs Blue. See the camera will focus. But yeah, um, these are the ones that I thought looked like uh, red uh, hornets, which I guess you guys can't really see. Um, these are those yellow ones that I had. And a rock back there. And this is a new frag that I got from my brother's fish tank. It's like, a, I think it's an orange bam bam. And here goes the torch coral. And the recordia is back there. But yeah, like I said, I mean, these corals don't look the happiest right now, but they have been making an improvement. Um, when I first added the Zoas, no, none of the Zoas were opening up, but now they're starting to open up. Um, the torch coral wasn't extending out and now he's starting to extend same thing goes for the recordia so it's just a healing process I guess and eventually these corals will get back to their beauty the way they were before um, not sure what I'm gonna do with them though I, I'm, I really don't want these corals in this fish tank maybe I'll give them away to my brother or sell them out to the sell them back to the LFS or I might even do a contest here on my channel I'm not too sure but again I'm not sure I don't plan on keeping these corals in here I plan on having SPS dominated tank um, I do love the ACANs though the ACANs might stay and uh, yeah that's about it guys um, if you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the section below. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Next video is going to be a video over all the hardware that I got on this fish tank. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next time.